everyone and welcome back. Today I'll be going over uh, replacing some of the lights and uh, I'll be doing that on the 88 Suburban. Um, first thing I'll be doing is um, taking the gauge cluster out. So I'll show you how to take the, this bezel cover off and then um, taking the cluster loose so you can get to them. You can actually reach up from the floor up behind the dash and actually get to all the bulbs um, if your hands are small and you got you know small arms but uh, it's really not that hard to take these out and then I'll also be going over um, replacing the tail light bulbs and the front turn signal bulbs so I've got uh, quite a collection of bulbs here that I'm going to be testing what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything loose while it's still daylight and then once it gets dark I'll start doing the bulbs hopefully there'll be enough light from the interior to be able to see what I'm doing but for the most part everything will be loose already but I wanted to do it at night so you could actually see the difference in the lights um, I just turned the the lights on now and you can't even tell that the the gauge lights are even on uh, <laughs> and um, they're pretty pretty dark um, at night so and um, I've replaced them on uh, the 91 Suburban and it makes a whole lot of difference the bulbs I used in the 91 were made by Sirius LED I found them on Amazon um, several years ago I bought a bunch of LED bulbs that replace you know regular vehicle bulbs um, but they were very cheap quality and uh, they weren't really any brighter so I'm glad I found some of the nicer ones now that hopefully you know make a lot of difference and one one issue with them was that a lot of your LED cheap LED bulbs they'll make them longer so if you've got which is what the gauge cluster lights use the 194 bulbs they'll actually be too long to fit behind the gauge because they're like this long whereas normal bulbs are shorter and so you can't actually even put them in there anyway But I did go ahead and get a few different brands to test. And as you can see here, there's apparently different colors of these. I just got white bulbs. Um, I'll also be putting them in the, uh, your tail lights have, of course, your regular 1157 bulb for your turn, signal, brake light, and running light or parking light. But it also has one of these as well just for added light I guess um, and then you have your cornering lights in the front that are yellow also use the 194 your reverse lights your reverse lights are 1156 bulbs and I got some of those as well and then your front turn signals are also 1157s. Um, now, I actually saw when I was purchasing these bulbs, one of the brands, I forget which one it was, but they actually said that the proper way, I mean, for me, it seems like if you have a red lens, then if you put a white bulb behind it, you would get more light out of it because you're already going through a red lens so you'd think that the light the, the white bulbs would you know give you more brightness out of them and it's still going to be red because your lens is red but they say the proper way to do it is to put a red bulb behind a red lens um, or the same thing with the amber ones if you have an amber lens you should put an amber bulb and not a white bulb I don't know I'm curious to see the difference. I'll probably try 
both and see how it looks. I just, it seems to me that it would make more sense that a white bulb would be brighter. So here's the Sirius LED bulbs that I put in the dash of the Suburban, my Suburban, the, the 91. Um, and these are great. They're the same length, as far as I could tell, as opposed to a regular bulb. And they're really nice and bright, but they're not so bad, you know, they're not so bright that it blinds you when you're going down the road at night with the uh, gauge lights on. It doesn't, you know, cause a, a glare or anything. Even though they're nice and bright, they don't, you know, blind you or anything. This is also another one of their bulbs. These are also white. I wanted to test them against the other kind to see the difference. And then I have some more. These are colored bulbs. I actually bought them for my uh, 85 Blazer. I'm gonna put uh, a blue bulb in the gauge cluster on that truck. Um, but I'll probably test them in this gauge cluster to see. There's a dark blue and a light blue. The uh, white ones though emit, emit a bluish tint though on their own. I, some of it I guess is because it's an LED and LEDs seem to tend to emit a slight blue glow anyway but um, also it may be because the back cover of this is actually a light blue so it may be bouncing off of that and then here's another it's from Philips um, I wanted to test these and see I think these are white as well so I have quite a few bulbs and then I've got these these are the ones for the um, For your brake lights and your turn signals 1157 they look fancy I don't know how well they work but we'll find out definitely look kind of funny and they look a little long so that's again another thing you got to think about is this is gonna be coming up to your lens and if your lens is really close to the socket then you're not gonna be able to get your lens back on but we'll see how it goes um, anyway and then another thing to consider if you want to put LED bulbs though in your turn signals or your brake lights you're probably gonna have to get an LED flasher and the reason is because incandescent bulbs use a lot more current and so how a flasher works is basically the electricity travels through this and when it gets to a certain heat amount then it disconnects so you're going to have two pieces of metal together until that current flow makes it so hot that it pulls away and then when it pulls away of course it cools off and then it connects again and that's what causes your flasher right there so every time that's flat flickering or flashing it's going like this but an LED bulb takes so little current that a factory flasher will not get hot enough and it will your lights will barely flicker because it's it's barely getting to a heat range and then starting to move away and as soon as it moves away it cools back off it's not getting hot enough to go back and forth so I got a couple of different flashers to test um, both of them are supposed to be for um, uh, LEDs so I'll test it with the regular flasher in it, but I tried that in my blazer with the, the cheaper LEDs a few years ago, and, and that's what it did. It, they're bright, and they look nice, but there's barely any difference in the two elements because of um, the flasher. So anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and start taking this gauge bezel off. I've got quite a few screwdrivers down here. Um, 
the main ones here are just Phillips. So just uh, find a one that fits really well. That one's a little bit too small. And just take all the screws out. I'm hoping this camera angle will work better. I changed my GoPro from wide to super view because it's a little further zoomed out. It picks up more. I'm hoping that will help with uh, being able to see more and trying to keep the angles or the, the view aimed where it needs to be. Um, the screwdriver is a little bit long for this. I usually just uh, put the screws in the cup holder or something so you don't lose them. Sometimes the screws get a little messed up and they'll just spin. If you can get it to come out a little bit, you can take your fingernail or a flat screwdriver and put behind it and just and pull on it a little bit and then it'll help it come out of there. Also got four screws down here that you'll need to take out. So the worst part I'd say about the whole thing is that you really need to take, if you have a CD player, or even if you still have the tape deck that came in the truck, you're pretty much going to have to remove that in order to get the bezel out. Especially if you have this extra retainer, you may have to bend some of the tabs. It's not too hard, just take a flat screwdriver. There we go. Luckily this one's got so much wire that it will come all the way through without having to reach under from underneath and disconnect it, um, which is a lot easier. Got that out of the way. The only other thing you really have to worry about too much is your light switch. Here, you can usually just pop it through there, and then this will come out. If you want to make it easy, you can tilt your steering wheel down, and if you really want to get some extra, put it all the way down to first gear. I actually have the truck running right now because it hasn't run in a while. I'm just kind of letting the battery kind of recover. Um, but I do have the parking brake on and my foot's on the brake. Just kind of weasel it out of there. And you usually twist it a little bit. It's pretty tough. You're probably not going to break it unless you really are yanking on it. Just uh, kind of move it around and you'll uh, be able to pop it out of there. 
and this is also a good time if you ever if your needle doesn't line up properly or it doesn't work at all once you do that it's really easy it's these two screws and then this will come off and then it's snapped on right here with this uh, metal clip just snaps onto the column so if if when you're in reverse it shows you're in neutral or it's way back here you can just take this off and then move it up and down and also you can see the cable on one side is broken which will usually cause it to move and that's usually a lot of times what's caused the problem is that the uh, the cable is broken which gives it a little less tension and uh, so you can adjust there you can get a new one you can get them from LMC truck I think it's about $25 or something like that for the, the bracket and the spring the needle and uh, it all comes in one piece and they're really easy to replace so once you get the bezel and everything off then in order to get the actual cluster out you'll have some uh, seven millimeter screws that you'll need to take off um, there's one here one here and there's one here one up here um, this one I don't think you actually have to take that one loose I think that's actually for the uh, vent here and same with these two and then this one is holding the plastic clear plastic to the backing here and these two for the uh, indicator don't need to be taken off either um, so like I said I think it's a seven millimeter so We'll uh, take care of that. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and start taking this off. And these don't need to be real tight. You can probably tell I'm barely doing anything to take them loose. They're really loose. You don't want to crank down on, on them too hard or you'll break the plastic all right a couple of these you may need to either use a, a swivel or a wrench to get it loose this top one I'm gonna go ahead and use a swivel on Be easier just to use a wrench. All right. I think that's all the ones that holds it in place. And the weird thing about this is you'll notice some of it's in front of the metal and some of it's behind it. Same here, so this can be a little difficult as well. This one's probably never been out before either, so that doesn't help and it may be some people might find it easier to take the actual dash pad off it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference but um, it's not too hard to take loose and I'll I'll be taking the I'll be taking the dash pad off um, probably here in a couple of weeks I've ordered all the stuff to do the AC and the heater core and so I'll be taking this off anyway. Hey everyone, so I just want to add this in here real quick because I'm trying to take the cluster out here in the video. Um, I wanted to just mention that it's not as quite as hard as it seems to hear in this video. Um, I was having trouble to getting it out of the 
the dash mainly because I had forgotten that it was a cable driven speedometer. Um, the 91 Suburban is electronic and so when you get the cluster out from away from the metal of the um, the dash that it moves away from it pretty far because it has an electric connector rather than a cable but on these with the cable driven the, the cables doesn't have, have any slack in it and you can only get that cluster maybe an inch or so past that metal lip and uh, then you're gonna have to reach in behind in between the, the metal of the dash and the cluster and release the speedometer cable from the cluster and before you can get it further out um, you can also possibly reach up from underneath if you lay in the floor and follow up kind of where your brake pedal is and you'll find that cable pretty easily um, you may be able to do that and release the spring I would say you probably at least take the screws loose from the cluster first and maybe go ahead and get into that part where you can kind of move the cluster back and forth because you're going to have to be able to get that cable actually away from the cluster in order to actually have it release. You won't be able to just go back there and press the spring and it release because it's just a, a metal catch basically. Um, and the again the speedometer cable is very rigid so it's it doesn't have a lot of slack or anything you may be able to hold the spring and then pull the cable away but i feel like it's probably going to be easier for you if you just kind of push the cluster away from it um it, it kind of depends either way you're going to have to you know have pretty small hands or something to be able to reach back there probably would actually be a little bit more room in between the cluster and the, the gauge to get it loose but i just wanted to add this in here to kind of explain a little bit more why i was having so much trouble here the the gauges the clusters aren't really that hard to get out the hardest part is just that the fact that they are wedged into that metal frame and uh you could probably honestly leave the cluster in there without any screws holding it in place and you'd never have it move around that's how tight they usually fit in there um, but uh, you just kind of have to grab a hold of it and wiggle it around keep trying different corners uh, the worst part on them is probably going to be the the tab that shoots off the side of the, off the left side there where it screws into the metal that's probably the weakest point of the cluster so <clears throat> when you're pulling and trying to move it around that would be the most cautious there you can see right there in the video now I'm trying to hold the even the dash pad away from it to make sure I don't break that tab off other than that it's pretty solid um, just don't get too crazy with it and just uh, take your time and just move it back and forth until you can get it to to come out of the uh, metal frame there. All right, so <laughs> this has obviously been one of the hardest ones um, to get out for some reason. But uh, if you have a cable driven speedometer, you're gonna have to release that cable at this point. That's as far as the cable will allow it to go. Um, you can reach right behind it, and I'll show you once I get it out, but there's a little release, and you push it towards the gauge. I think. Yeah. There we go. Now it should come out. There we go. The wire harness is enough for you to flip it over off and see if I can aim it better so you can see this. This is your little release for your uh, speedometer cable. So you'll have to reach back behind it like I was doing earlier and then just push it and then pull, kind of pull out at the same time on the cluster and the cable will come out. So. And this one, like again, like I said, it's probably never been out before. 
it is kind of a tight squeeze and taking the uh, the whole dash pad over would probably make it a little bit easier because you wouldn't have to be pulling up on that and everything and as you can see back here in the dark probably but uh, there's not a lot of room back there I mean again if you have small hands you could probably get under there from underneath and reach up and you can feel these these are all your bulbs um, and you're gonna kind of have to do trial and error whether or not <clears throat> you can uh, get them out you just twist them a little bit and they come out now if you wanted to take this cluster all the way out completely you'd have to disconnect this specific light here it has this cable hooked to it. it's actually a fiber optic cable and it runs all the way down to your cigarette lighter area um, and it comes in this side here and it's supposed to transfer light so when you open this you'll have light at night um, they don't work very well basically there's a tiny little glow and that's about it it accomplishes nothing but um, anyway so you'd have to, in order to get the whole cluster completely out of the vehicle, you'd have to take this, just twist this one just like you do the black ones. Like that. You just lay that over back there somewhere. And there's a tiny little screw on the back of this. I don't know. You can see that. And yeah, it's right, right down there. It's probably, I think it's a seven, but it may be even smaller than that. Uh, you can unscrew that. That's your, um, your, um, <clears throat> it's what picks up the signal to send to your computer for the speed sensor, basically. And then you've got another bulb here that is in a harness, so you'll just twist that one just like these, lay it aside. That's probably the check engine light one. And then you, the big harness here, of course, you obviously have to take loose. It can be a little bit of a pain. Um, but I think on those, you just squeeze them in. It's usually easy to do one corner at a time if you can. Um, but, and they're generally stuck in there pretty good. And like I said, it's probably never been loose before. And just want to make sure that it's set back in good. Um, but of course, I'm going to leave it connected because I want to be able to... <clears throat> change the bulbs as I go along and be able to turn the lights on and everything. A little bit darker out now. So let's see if you can actually see the... You can probably see that a little bit. Not much though. So now we can get to those bulbs very easily. Your side marker turn signals here have two star or Torx screws, but you can actually get to them from under the hood as well. Instead of taking that loose, you can just come around here, reach through this slot right here, and it's the same thing, you twist it, just a very small amount, and then that'll come out, and you can get to your bulb, and then you put it right back in. Your turn signals are a lot harder to get to. Um, you know, your turn signals, you actually can't take the bulb out without taking your grill loose, um, which is a little annoying. But 
it's not too hard. You got torque screws here, and one here, one here, two at the top. Once you get that off, there's a seven or eight millimeter bolt, just like these. It's down here in the corner. So you take that, and there's five across the top, and then you have to do the same thing on this side. It takes this bezel off. So you take these two screws, these two screws out, take the bezel out. You kind of have to push up, I think, to tilt it back. Um, and then you can get to the screw there. I don't, there shouldn't be one at the top here. And then you can do the same thing, just kind of lift and then twist it out and down. Be careful because your wiring harness, of course, is connected to it. So it's not going to just, you know, come off. It's going to probably come out to about here and then kind of hang. And then to do your tail light, brake light, and reverse light, you have to take your lens off. And that is also a Torx screws. And it is a T15. And there's four of them. So I'll go ahead and pop those out real quick. go and then you can get to your bulbs so your reverse lights down here the 1156 and the other one in there here's the uh, 194 bulb so what I'll do is I'm gonna leave the other side on with the factory bulbs in it and then I'll put the aftermarket ones in and that way we can see a difference once it gets dark and we'll just be able to you know, set that one back over and put one screw in it just to hold it in place I'm going to go ahead and pull the grill apart too so I don't have to do that once it's dark. But again, you just got two long T15 Torx screws. And then these are usually a little bit shorter. Same thing on the other side. So again, just spin these short seven millimeter screws out. Okay. This one has the screw in the middle behind the behind the grill. Neither of the other two have that. Maybe they were supposed to, but which is gonna make it extremely hard to get to, which is probably the reason why there wasn't one on the other ones. So, this wing was continually spinning. It would not come loose. You can't really get a ratchet on it. You can only get a wrench on it. 
so I ended up just breaking the grill there. Uh, <laughs> this grill is going to get replaced anyway because of where it's broken in other places, so not a big deal. And again, the other two trucks don't even have one there, or at least not anymore. And it really doesn't, it's, it's not necessary. So, anyway. So, once you got all the screws out, it will just pop easily out. Just slide that underneath first. And then you probably have to lift up on it a little bit, wake it in. But, uh, then you can get to your bulbs, and if you want to just get rid of the whole grill together, um, and just squeeze that in, twist, your way to pop out, and same thing with that one, and then you can just sit this out of the way, um, and of course also in the process of trying to get that loose, an extension dropped, and went down in here, so, yeah. That's always fun when you lose a tool. And it, it's probably still in there between the, yeah, it's gonna be right in between the condenser here and the radiator. Okay, so it's pretty much completely dark out now. So I'm gonna turn the interior light off and then we'll see. All right. So that's basically your your gauge lights factory. Yeah, it barely picks up at all, it seems like, on the camera. Um, obviously the buzzer works really well for the headlights. Um, Hopefully that picked up. It didn't seem to show up too well on my camera. Hey guys, I want to record over this part. I'm sure you noticed um, how loud the buzzer is for warning you that you left your headlight switch on. So here I was just trying to show how dim the factory bulbs are behind the gauge. Um, the voltmeters not too bad but then the oil pressure gauge you can barely see now of course in real life as you're sitting in the truck you can see them better than that it's just the camera can't pull in enough light but I'll be putting in a LED bulb in the location closest to the voltmeter I'll just be doing that one at first and that's what I use to test each different kind of bulb and uh, it definitely makes a, a big difference. <clears throat> the Sirius LED, the first one I'm putting in, uh, it really, it's a very, it's, it, it's really bright, but again, it doesn't blind you or anything when you're driving. And it's the same ones I put in my 91 Suburban. And they do really well. So, uh, as you can see, it, it, it'll be a, a big difference and uh, I'll probably be recording over some of this coming up as well as I test the other ones for the same reason as the buzzer. And I'm going to switch it with the other bulb, see if there's any difference. I get the feeling they're going to be about the same. Um, I'm pretty sure also that these uh, serious LED bulbs are also what they call error proof the cheaper LEDs would um, <coughs> they would only work if it, they were put in a certain way like the bulb can go in either direction into the plug but it uh, it would only actually light up in one position okay guys in this bit here I would just uh, swap the one serious LED bulb with the other um, here it looks bluer at first but um, once I tilt it again it looks about the same I'd say there really isn't any difference between the two to be honest and uh, I have to look but I think they're about the same price too so not much difference there so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the interior light on Alright, I'll put the 
the mice holes in this one. Alright, now I do have the other couple of bulbs that I wanted to test in the interior. So I've got some white bulbs here by Wax Waxma. Waxma. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but we're gonna see how they work anyway. Alright guys, in this little bit here, I was testing that other bulb, and I did notice that it looks slightly greener color, even though it's a white bulb, but it uh, definitely seems to have a more whitish green tint rather than blue on that one. Alright, here I was testing the bulbs I bought that were made by Philips. They are uh, quite a bit more expensive than the Sirius LED. I'd say they put out about the same amount of light. A slight bluish color as well, about the same. And they're also not airproof, so they don't come on. You have to take them back out of the socket and flip them and then put them back in. Um, not a big deal, but considering the price difference, I wasn't too impressed with these. Okay, in this part, I was testing the two different colored blue bulbs that I had bought and uh, the first one here is the light blue actually and it's you can say it's kind of a maybe what some people would call a cold blue color it's a lightish blue it has a slight purple tint to it as well um, but it was pretty nice and they, as you can see they're definitely brighter too so even over top of the incandescent um, they're definitely a lot brighter. You can see the speedometer at one point there. and um, There's definitely a big difference there. And uh, the next one here is going to be the dark blue bulb. And I really liked these. They definitely have a pretty strong purplish um, tint to them. And also they're bright as well. So between the two of them, you really get the, the color is really nice. But you get the added bonus of the extra brightness compared to the factory or incandescent bulbs and um, the fact that again they're LED so they don't get hot they use less uh, current as well so I was pretty happy with these bulbs and uh, I'll definitely be getting the dark ones I think to put in the K5 blazer now I should be able to turn my lights on with that buzzing noise so anyway so if you want purple gauges, then uh, there you go. And that's just one, of course. The rest of them are very clear. Now, uh, these I would just put the white bulbs in, but I want to test these because I'll probably be putting these in the, the 85 Blazer. And I really think that I may end up uh, getting more of these because I really actually kind of like that purplish blue color it's not blinding at all but it's it's just a kind of a unique color so anyway um, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch all these to the white ones and then we can see what the whole cluster looks like So you've got that one I was replacing there. It's in between your two top small gauges. And of course, if you're doing this with the lights on, be careful because the incandescents get hot very quickly. Which was one of the main reasons why I started getting the ideas of putting um, LED bulbs in here is that I replaced some of the interior bulbs like the ones up here with uh, LEDs because in my 91 Suburban 
that it actually gotten so hot from being on long periods of time that it actually started melting the plastic and uh and it got really brittle so you really you're getting a lot of good reasons to switch all these bulbs over to LEDs because they pull less current they don't get near as hot and generally they're supposed to last longer too so you've got a third one third bulb you'll want to change up here to the uh, left of your speedometer can see what it looks like with all the gauge lights replaced it's a lot brighter but again it doesn't blind you at all so makes it look a lot nicer they're not anywhere near as hot now I don't replace the the indicator bulbs like the, the brake light or the check engine light um, seatbelt light turn signal markers because they're generally not on all the time um, so I don't bother with those I mean you could so we're gonna test out some of these bulbs real quick this is the beam tech Things can be really hot, so I got a towel that I've got folded over. To be honest there's really not much difference and it looks kind of orange so that's pretty disappointing i want to put the turn signal on to see if it actually works it's flickering normally ah, and that's that one's actually reacting properly which is surprising and it definitely is bright but it does look kind of orange so I kind of understand what they were saying about that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put these in permanently. These are gonna be the reverse lights. Um, Cause I know that these will be brighter than the original reverse lights. this thing is not really hot at all I 
definitely say it's brighter than the original ball bulb on the other side um definitely looks that way in the other camera there i'm gonna try the turn signal on that as well that one seems to be working properly oh yeah it's definitely bright And I do want to see the reverse light though is definitely pretty bright. Really just a different tone of color. Alright, and the last thing I'm gonna do real quick is throw in one of these. Oh shoot, I think they're mixed up. I think this is the amber bulb. I'm gonna take out one of the turn signal bulbs and uh See what we think of that. Well, I definitely say there's no contest there. I definitely say the uh, LED is brighter. I'm gonna go ahead and put the turn signal on again. We'll see. Aha. That bulb is causing a problem with the turn signals. But again, it's definitely not hot at all. Which is nice. Probably shouldn't have started the truck with those laners or anything. Whereas this glass bulb is still almost too hot to hold. All right, I think that's gonna be about it. This has definitely been a little bit more difficult than I anticipated trying to film all this in the dark. So, I will update more on this later on. All right, guys.